You know what is interesting to me about this uh, DACA debate there? Congress is actually debating this. And Trump Trump has been incredibly reasonable about this. Now, whether he's doing that as a political gambit, you know, who can say everything that politicians do is a political gambit, but he has made a really good offer. I mean, here he is. He was elected, build the wall, throw the Mexicans out. Mexicans are rapists. This is terrible. We don't want any more Mexicans. You know, he said all that. That's his base. A lot of people feel like that. Ann Coulter has been screaming about him, at him about the wall since he got elected. She sends out a tweet every uh, day saying number of miles on the wall built zero, and she does like every day. He's offering to not only let the dreamers stay, but have a path to citizenship and to give a path to citizenship for a million, uh, over a million others. I think it's close to two million others. So he's actually being very generous. And what he's saying is, yeah, but, but you've got to secure the wall so this doesn't, you've got to secure the border so this doesn't happen again. Give me some money for my wall. Give me some money for security. Uh, let's stop the chain migration. It really is uh, a very, very reasonable offer. And they, they just keep coming back because nobody really wants to do this. Everybody's afraid of doing it. So they keep coming back. Well, let's just do the dreamers now. A clean dreamer bill, they call it. It's not a clean bill because it just uh, creates the situation in which the same problem is going to happen again. You know, And I think that's that's the that's the thing that the people do not want this. The people simply do not want it. They want to see immigration curtailed. Of course they do. Of course they do. It only makes sense. And my, my thing is, what's the argument against this? What is the, I, I can never figure this out. What is the argument against securing the border? 80% of the people say borders should be secure. And of course you can say, well, that is the policy, but we haven't done it. And all these people saying we want sanctuary cities, you know, what is the argument? And I just feel, you know, to me, it's a rule of law thing. This has never been, immigration has never been one of my big issues. It's never been, I'm much more concerned with regulation. That's why I've been so happy with uh, Trump because of the rolling back of regulation. But, but I do not understand why it's not simply a rule of law issue. You know, if you have, it, we are a nation of laws, not of men. It doesn't matter if Chuck Schumer cries. It doesn't matter if his chin wobbles and his eyes fill. That's not the point. The point is they pass, these are the same guys. They pass the laws obey the law. And you know, Chuck Schumer is not the only person who speaks with forked tongue on this. We have a clip of Dianne Feinstein from 1993. This is clip number seven. Listen to this. This is a country that's based on immigration. And we all know that. And yet at times you become so overtaxed, you have to concentrate on saying the people who should be here are those who come legally at this time. And we've got to, for the time being, enforce our borders. And now here she is in the present day. If Congress doesn't act now and pass a law, President Trump's decision to terminate this program will have devastating consequences for the nearly 800,000 families across the United States, particularly those in California. This decision to end DACA without first ensuring that young people have legal protection is why we are demanding a vote on the DREAM Act as soon as possible. Now, now this, you know, the, the two-facedness, they have to do this. They have to talk tough on immigration because of the people, because the people, people are ready to cut legal immigration. They have a sense that too many people have come in now and we need time to assimilate them, which is the people are almost always right about this because it's the people. These people go and live where the people live. They don't go and live where Diane Feinstein lives. She's not harboring in her house, you know, in her however many houses she has. She is not harboring illegal immigrants and neither is Chuck Schumer and neither is Don Lemon or Anderson Cooper. And so they can their chins can tremble over the sad eyed Mexicans all they want and their eyes can fill and all that stuff. But they're not doing this. The people are the ones who are suffering from it and who understand the suffering of their neighbors and people in, in uh, Texas and in uh, Arizona and, uh, and uh, New Mexico. They, they know what's going on. So they have to talk tough. But this is, you know, tomorrow we're going to, it's tomorrow, we're going to have Douglas Murray on, who's written this excellent, excellent book called The Strange Death of Europe about how immigration in part, it's, called, it's got a subtitle like Immigration, Identity, and Islam. And the immigration in part is one of the reasons Europe is dying, if not already dead. And all through the time they were bringing in these huge, huge numbers of immigrants, the people were saying no. And the, the politicians were making speeches saying we won't. And then they did. And that's exactly what's been happening here. And you start to wonder, you know, you start to wonder when the immigration comes in and starts to change the, the nature of neighborhoods, when they bring in Somalis and they put them in the middle of 
you know, Michigan or something like this. So you know a town, you start to wonder, do these people hate us? Do they hate what they, we are? Do they hate themselves? Do they hate everything that the West, I mean, the West has given them everything, every single thing, everywhere, anywhere on earth where a man walks free, it's because of America. You know, if, it's, if it wasn't killing off the Nazis, it was destroying the Soviet Union. And they always say, well, you know, it's Gorbachev. It wasn't Gorbachev. Gorbachev did everything he could to keep the Soviet Union alive. They are lying about that. It was Reagan. It was the Pope. It was the West. It was Maggie Thatcher. It was the West that brought the Soviet Union down. Every single human being who walks in political freedom does so either because we freed them or we protect their freedom or we keep them free. 